Welcome to a beautiful beach in beautiful BC, Canada, somewhere out there. <coughs> um, I thought I'd take this opportunity to get out, get some sunshine. And uh, since it's been quite cloudy and rainy and cold, windy for the last couple weeks, um, it would be crazy to stay indoors on a Sunday afternoon. And since I'm not doing anything exciting, I thought I'd talk about a topic. Um, sleep apnea. Um, I've always kind of had it in the back of my mind that I did suffer from a little sleep apnea. You may be a person that is known for snoring. Uh, like I was um, and I thought well you know I just snore not a big deal uh, to my wife I you know was a little uh, apologetic <laughs> she she seemed to get used to it and be able to sleep with my snoring my daughter complains but anyways um, it was actually more serious than I ever, ever considered. And what had happened is um, I was developing a, a sleep disorder, a sleep panic, actually, where I felt like I was suffocating, um, like being tortured, waterboarded, and when you're sleeping everything is happening at a subconscious level um, your subconscious knows that there's a problem but in waking life you don't know that there is a problem happening while you're sleeping and um, the anxiety is actually what um, encouraged me to go see a doctor about it and so then therefore for I was tested for actual sleep apnea. Now I got the results back uh, about a week ago and uh, it was quite shocking actually. It turns out that on average, these are average numbers, um, I stopped breathing 70 times in, in a minute. No, sorry. <laughs> that would be extreme 70 times in an hour so that is more than once a minute um, now you say how can you stop breathing more than you know one time per minute well actually some of those those length of non breathing were over a minute long so that's how you get an average of uh, 70 times but the average per minute time I was breathing was less than 30 seconds so um, I'm not breathing more than I am while I'm sleeping and that's really bad <laughs> um, if you study the health concerns around sleep apnea you, you will find out that it um, can ha cause heart problems cholesterol problems weight issues high blood pressure uh, obvious feelings of uh, not getting enough rest, exhaustion during the day, foggy head, you know, you kind of always feel unfocused or um, kind of like in a dream, days. And well, no wonder that's how I felt because uh, I was basically dying in my sleep and that's why um, I developed a subconscious sleep anxiety. Um, the only way I can really uh, give an example is like I felt like I was being waterboarded while I was sleeping. <laughs> well, I've never actually been waterboarded, but that's how I imagine it. Ultimate torture. Um, but I didn't really realize it was happening because you know you're sleeping and um, so slowly I became aware of it in my awake state the 
the conscious um, times of my day. And, um, yeah, yeah, I knew there was a problem, so I went and saw a doctor. But before I saw the doctor, like, I, I, I was actually afraid to go to sleep. Um, it was, like, came to a, a head where, you know, for about a week, I was totally afraid to go to sleep. <clears throat> and then it was, um, that, that anxiety doesn't allow you to fall asleep. So you don't actually sleep until utter exhaustion, like complete delirium, and then trying to get up and function the next day to work, it's, it's, uh, it's brutal. And so, I'm, long story short, I'm happy to say I was tested, and there is help. Um, you may have heard of a CPAP machine. I think it's called, it stands for constant pressure, um, constant pressure apparatus or something like that. Uh, anyways, I've got like a top of a model on loan as a like trial period demo and it is very, very nice. I've been using it for about three, day, three days, three nights. Um, it's very comfortable to wear once I get past the anxiety of falling asleep. Now that phobia, um, it's not going to go away overnight. Because it was developed at a subconscious level, it has to go away at a subconscious level, even though I can tell myself, you know, all day long that it's uh, not a problem anymore. I have a machine. It's all in my head. I will sleep fine tonight. I'm not going to stop breathing and die but I can say that all I want um, since it developed at a subconscious level I think it's gonna take being okay breathing okay at night uh, before my subconscious accepts that uh, so um, I still don't fall asleep till about 2 or 3 a.m. even with uh, something equivalent to Valium I don't take very much of it. I just don't want to, you know, get into that crutch and never work through the anxiety. But um, uh, I can tell just in three days that night by night I am feeling more relaxed. Um, the anxiety was carrying on throughout the day, and that is subsiding as well. So uh, that's my story about sleep apnea folks uh, so if you got a snoring problem you might want to get tested if you have the symptoms of you know exhaustion and headaches and things like this during the day um, there is help and uh, huge health benefits by by getting this treated because it is quite a serious thing it turns out to be and I would have never have come to it